the continuity of government, Dick Cheney and others. And then we have a congressional hearing where we have Congressman Jack Brooks and others during Iran-Contra bringing up the secret plans, and they're told by Congressman Inouye that that can't be discussed. It's a national security issue. In the 1980s, the concentration camp program got a big boost. Colonel North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area. So may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in which he had worked. I believe yeah, that it was. Yeah, I most, I get yeah, I most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, I'm certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. And tragically, the only member who got close was Jack Brooks, and he was stopped by the chairman. But the truth of the matter is that, yes, you do have those standby provisions, and the plans are there, and the statutory uh, emergency plans are there, whereby uh, you could, in the name of uh, stopping terrorism, apprehend, invoke the military, and uh, arrest Americans and hold them in detention camps. Throughout history, criminals get control of governments. They use phony crises to enslave the public. And they're taking your pension funds. They're taking your money. They're raising the taxes on you. They are going to squeeze the daylights out of us all. And that's why they're geared up for martial law and to take the media over. Because this is quite a gamble by the establishment. You know, we should have grand juries indicting the bankers and having them turn states' evidence against each other. And this whole criminal shadow government, national security state, should be exposed. Everything it's engineered and bring in total tyranny and start arresting people for their speech. So it either goes into tyranny or into liberty. And believe me, folks, liberty is probably where it's going because this tyranny is so horrible, they've got planned... Let's go ahead and go to Congressman a year and a half ago on the Homeland Security Board wanting to know about PDD-51. Now, this fight went on for a year. The cover sheet of Presidential Decision Directive 51 stated the president's a dictator. Congress has no power during any emergency, including economic. So now Congress isn't involved in continuity of government when Congress is co-equal to the president and the courts. In fact, the Founding Fathers said Congress was above the courts and the president, but then later courts said, no, they're equal. Now they're saying they're not, okay? Because it's harder for a dictator to take control in the Congress because there's 500 people. Separation of powers. The president is where your main dictator will come from, so it's the weakest. It follows the orders of Congress and then executes those orders. But then the chairman of the Homeland Security Committee said, I am co-equal with the president in national security. Let me see PDD-51. They were told no. But the cover sh sheet alone states the president's a dictator. Then we see last year PDD-51 being executed and members of Congress, Senator Inhofe and others, being told martial law will be declared if you don't hand total control and immunity over to the banks. And they followed orders and did it. So the martial law is now in place. And with that comes the FEMA camps. Will we get to that place? Not if we expose it. But we're already got our neck in the noose here. Is the executioner going to pull the lever? I don't know. Uh, let's continue with uh, the congressman talking about PDD-51. Most Americans would agree that it would be prudent to have a plan to provide for the continuity of government and the rule of law in case of a devastating terrorist attack or natural disaster, a plan that provides for the cooperation, the coordination, and continued functioning of all three branches of the government. The Bush administration tells us they have such a plan. 
They introduced a little sketchy public version that's clearly inadequate uh, and, and doesn't really tell us what they have in mind. But they said, don't worry, there's a detailed classified version. But now they've denied the entire Homeland Security Committee of the United States House of Representatives access to their so-called detailed plan to provide for continuity of government. They say, trust us. Trust us, the people who brought us Katrina to be competent in face of a disaster. Trust us, the people who brought us warrantless wiretapping and other excesses eroding our civil liberties. Trust us. Maybe the plan just really doesn't exist and that's why they won't show it to us. I don't know. Or maybe there's something there that's outrageous. The American people need their elected representatives to review this plan for the continuity of government. All right, that's Congressman Peter DeFazio. Now, that was a year and a half ago. Uh, Mr. DeFazio, the cover sheet says the president's a dictator and that Congress has no authority over continuity of government. That's why they're now saying Congress can't see it because they're declaring and executing that power. Now, we fast forward a year plus to October 3rd, and here is Congressman Sherman, who we interviewed here on air, other congressmen we interviewed, and Senator Inhofe, saying they marched in and told him, martial law will be declared if you don't do this. So, so, so we go from the 80s to where don't talk about the martial law plans in the FEMA camps. Uh, if you want to know about that, you know about it in executive session, Congressman Jack Brooks, to, oh, Congress, you're not allowed to see the plans now to Congress, do what we say, we're under martial law. The only way they can pass this bill is by creating and sustaining a panic atmosphere. That atmosphere is not justified. Many of us were told in private conversations that if we voted against this bill on Monday, that the sky would fall, the market would drop two or 3,000 points the first day, another couple thousand the second day, and a few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. That's what I call fear-mongering. So we have the congressman on with us. We only have him for five minutes, five, six minutes. Uh, congressman Brad Sherman, thank you for coming on, sir. Good to be with you. You know, Wall Street used uh, these uh, panic uh, tactics to get us to pass this $700 billion. Uh, well, what the bill really is is $700 billion in unmarked bills. They said the market would drop by 4,000 points, blood would flow in the streets, and uh, lions would be devouring children in the parks of Los Angeles. Now that the bill has passed, our economy is still going to be very bad. The bailout money so far has been set aside to buy shares in banks, $250 billion, $40 billion to AIG, and $60 billion yet to be committed, leaving the remaining $350 billion for future use. We've, uh, we've got to do everything we can to focus people's attention on this bill as it's carried out because uh, it allows Paulson to go up to Wall Street. He can give money to one uh, firm. He cannot return phone calls from another firm. Uh, he can uh, uh, take, he, he, he can if he want, finds out uh, which firms are donating to the 527 organizations which take secret contributions and then make political advertising. He can look at the RNC donor list. He can do anything he wants. Let's go back to what you said on the floor in the last 24 hours about members of Congress. And I've talked to some. They're, they're afraid to even come on and talk about it, being told there will be martial law in America and we'll just do this with or without you if you don't do this. That is incredible. And I just had the former head of the Treasury on earlier, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts from Reagan, had a policy saying that this this gives them economic martial law. Is that not terrorism? Is it, I mean, is not the definition to threaten harm or carry out harm for a political aim, sir? Well, but keep in mind, the, we passed the bill, and I'm told the market is down. Sir, here's the $64 million question. You and other members of Congress say, yeah, well, there were some people threatening martial law, but we don't, you know, you know, think they meant it. They were just trying to, to fear monger, which I call terrorism, into it. That's a huge issue. Specifically, sir, we need to know names. Who told you that they were told that uh, martial law and blood in the streets, as you said, what happened? Private conversations between members on the floor, you, you really can't reveal without the, the permission of the other I party. understand, but were there arm twisters coming up, or were they scared? I mean, how was it said, specifically? What we have to do is expose those circumstances. 
where we're bailing out a particular firm and how many of the executives at firm are continuing to make a million dollars a year, five million dollars a year, twenty million dollars a year. There's going to be a lot of information that is not public and it's going to take investigative reporters to find out things that congressmen can't find out and that the public is not going to be aware of. You know, I have to I have to go right now, but uh, it's been a pleasure being with you. Somebody in D.C. was feeding you guys quite a story prior to the bailout, a story that if we didn't do this, if we didn't do this, we were going to see something on the scale of the uh, of the Depression. We were t- There were people that were talking about, um, you know, martial law being instituted, uh, civil unrest, all this kind of stuff. Who was feeding you this information? That's Henry Paulson. We had a, a conference call early on. It was on a Friday, I think uh, a week and a half before this the vote on October 1st. So it would have been the middle, what was it, 19th, 19th of September, okay. we had a, a conference call. 